What's up grappler fans? Some of y'all may have seen my first gen Cummins already in some of my previous videos. If not, this is a 1992 W250. It's a four wheel drive, five speed manual uh, Dodge with the, uh, the Cummins 5.9 12 valve. So pretty solid old truck. You can see this one's pretty rusty looking. It's faded and uh, pretty beat up. It's had a hard life. It's got like 350,000 miles at least on it. The odometer hasn't worked a couple owners ago and it stopped at 330. So could have 400,000 who knows who knows how many times it's been resealed how many transmissions it's had or if it's the original probably not the old uh, get drag five speeds aren't that it's great so a couple of things like that we're going to address because there's really not much to these trucks they're super simple uh, but there are a few things you got to take care of if you want to get 400,000 miles out of them and at 400,000 miles keep on driving the thing and be towing stuff all over creation like I did so uh, a little bit more backstory I bought this thing kind of on a whim. I was in the middle of my 1967 6.7 power stroke swap. Over here you can see I've got this tarped up 2016 wrecked truck that's pretty much a go-kart now that I can drive around. And a 71 crew cab. And over here I've got a couple more parts and a 67 crew cab. I'm sure y'all have seen all that or you don't care uh, but I needed to get all this stuff to my new house when I got orders to a new state with my job so I had to move um, hours away 500 miles or so buy a new house and I needed to move everything in a hurry I bought this truck from my boss who I had already already talked to a few times and been like man that thing's super cool if you ever sell it let me know he finally decided to sell it it was a little bit too much truck more than he needed and I scooped it up real quick um, I actually paid nine thousand dollars for it. I'll go ahead and tell you all that uh, that is a lot of money for a truck with so many miles and such terrible paint and everything but it did what I needed to do so well and I think I'm gonna hang on to it I really like this truck without further delay let's get into what we're doing for maintenance today uh, first thing obviously oil change I mentioned before uh, when I changed the vacuum pump on this thing that the oil hadn't been changed for thousands of miles it uh, needed an oil change when I bought it and then I made like five trips back and forth to my new house with it without changing the oil so we got some shell uh, Rotella here we're gonna put this 15w40 in here I ended up cheaping out on the, the filter let me know what y'all's opinion on filters and oil like would you rather go cheap oil nice filter vice versa or do you always just ball out and get the nicest stuff uh, but I ended up with a cheap filter on this truck uh, nicer oil and I'll explain a little bit why I have this other uh, O'Reilly's oil here as well as this little push button uh, switch here I got something exciting going on with that a little bit of a MacGyver kind of rig setup going on but I'm excited about it. I think it'd be pretty cool and a lot more convenient than what my current situation is with the electrical problems I'm having there went that so I'm gonna go ahead and get into changing this oil nothing too exciting there and I'll explain what's going on with the transmission and the electrical stuff I just popped the hood and here's a look at that odometer that stopped at 339 and uh, it's been there the whole time previous owner had it and he doesn't know how long it's been there before that so unknown mileage on here but it's at least 350 you know I've put 10,000 miles on it probably so um, yeah a lot of miles so first thing we're gonna look at this black oil uh, here's the another look at that vacuum pump I just replaced if y'all haven't seen that video uh, my power steering went out when I was towing everything here and I pulled in full lock and just totally quit. So did some troubleshooting there and between the power steering and vacuum pump figured out what my problem was. So be sure to check out that video. Nice shiny new freshly sealed up stuff there. Here's how black this oil is. Definitely time. Oh, let's get like a good contrast here. Yes, that is not what you want. Now I know diesels, they uh, you know put a lot of soot in the oil and we'll make it black pretty quick, but she needed to be changed for sure, so it is time. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. That, that skill there. All right, uh, here's our oil fill cap. We're gonna be doing this oil real quick. Uh, again, y'all saw I'm using shell oil. I'll go ahead and drain this stuff real quick and uh, throw some in. It takes 12 quarts, I believe, so there's that. I'm not gonna bore y'all with changing the oil. Look at that black oil, it's so gross. It's not what you want. It's not how you maintain them. Change your oil. 
and these old things leak. I don't know if you can see how much gunk is under here. Trans leaks, probably the rear main seal leaks, everything leaks. So if you have one of these old trucks, just keep oil in them and they'll go forever. But that means constantly checking your fluids for your trans, whether it's manual, automatic, whatever. This one has a little sight glass installed on it and you can see it's towards the bottom there, very low. I'm gonna be addressing that. That's why I have the second thing of O'Reilly's oil. Uh, this thing actually takes like 5W30, like engine oil in the trans, cause it's a manual and it just needs some lubrication. Uh, from what I've seen, that totally works fine. And uh, this old dinosaur will take it. So check your oil to keep these things going. Uh, a couple other odds and ends, I'm gonna show you things that fail. You can see there's this connector that's just hanging here. Don't need that cause the thing runs fine. I think that went to an old sensor and when they installed this like extra little piece here with the sight glass, uh, they no longer needed that. So they just left it hanging because why not? You know, it's an old work truck. So very oily setup. You can see you got the two piece drive shaft back here. You want to check your diff um, fluid, everything, just fluids. That's all this thing needs. It's a machine. It just wants some good clean oil. I also would recommend letting the thing run a little bit on any vehicle, you know, before you change the oil, let it flow out better. You can see it's kind of just dripping out. I didn't let it run because this thing leaks and I didn't want anything dripping down on me that was super hot. Uh, so it's gonna take a little bit longer to drain it out without it being hot, just because the oil is thicker. One more quick thing with this oil change before I go into what else you need to do to keep these things going for hundreds of thousands of miles. Just pull this old oil filter off and I'm sure y'all have heard this a thousand times. Everybody says don't double gasket it. And if you don't know what that means, as you can see, I'm just looking at metal here. I got no gasket. That's because it's still stuck on the oil filter receiving part of the engine here. So the oil filter goes right there. There's my gasket. It was stuck there. And if you go put this new one on, that has a gasket, you're gonna have barely any threads holding this oil filter on and you're gonna create a leak between those two gaskets. Now, that might not be the biggest deal because you'll probably catch it as soon as you turn the thing on, it'll start squirting oil everywhere and you'll just, you'll notice it. But if you don't, you're gonna pump all the oil out of your engine and there goes any of your chances of getting hundreds of thousands of miles because you're gonna just blow it up right then and there if you start driving down the highway with no oil. All right, y'all, I got the oil topped off. Made sure I put some oil in the filter. Got the seal on there good, nice and hand tight, and it's looking good on the dipstick. So I'm about to fire it up, but first I'm gonna move the Bronco around a little bit because we got a storm coming in. It looks like it's uh, looking pretty, maybe not in that direction. A little scary out here though, and lots of thunder. So while I'm at O'Reilly's, I feel like it's gonna start raining, and I'm gonna attempt to pull at least the front end of this thing into my garage that I recently just cleaned out and uh, try to finish this thing in there because I don't want to be stuck, you know, waiting another day to, to finish this up. So as I mentioned, changing fluids. Now, I wanna say the next thing that's super important with keeping these old trucks going for hundreds of thousands of miles is fuel related. So I'm gonna grab something else at O'Reilly's. It's starting to rain right now. And uh, one more thing as well, with this weird issue I've got with starting, I'm gonna fix. It's not super related to maintenance, but it's just something I gotta do. So let me show you how I start this thing if you haven't seen it already. It's a total pain, uh, but these first gen Cummins are known for having some wiring issues. The fusible links melt in them and uh, you end up losing you know, some of your electronic functions. So uh, to start this thing, grab my old key here, stick it in and you get the weight to start. And then normally once that's done, you would just turn the key and it would start, but mine does not do that. So we're gonna start over and I got this sucker hot wired. I have to reach in here, grab this wire, connect it to this wire and she'll start right up. So I'm gonna give the oil a little bit of chance to circulate, check the leaks, and if it's all good there, I'm gonna go get the parts I need to fix that, drive this thing in the rain, and we'll change one thing on the fuel system to make this thing last for another 100,000 miles with regular maintenance, of course.
good. Oil pressure's looking nice. Let's get the rest of this maintenance taken care of. Get this thing ready to work. project so let's head back to the house with it raining now i'm gonna hopefully pull it to the garage i just made some room in there but not really sure if this thing's gonna fit maybe at least get the hood under there let's get back on the road excited to have this thing in the garage I just ate some lunch and checked on my wife and baby we had our little girl very excited about that I've been tending to them a lot making sure they have everything they need so the YouTube channel is definitely suffering some here and there but totally worth it I may even stop doing videos for a little bit but y'all know I have the 6.7 power stroke project going on and as soon as my shops built I can get back into that full swing but for now just kind of wanted to keep y'all updated um, so excited about everything that's going on in my life right now but crazy busy so with that uh, we're gonna get right into the transmission being low on here I got this little pump uh, supposedly will fit on a gallon or a quart and it's gonna be tough to get that uh, transmission filled up because of where the filler is on it it's not like the engine where you just pour it right in so we're gonna try that out never done that before um, then we have a few other things I want to get to that are very important on maintaining one of these trucks and getting them to these high mileage areas and then keeping them going well into the four or five hundred thousand mile range all right so i just was checking off my oil level and look who came to hang out say hey willie this is little wilma this is our one week old baby girl and uh, she is excited for her youtube debut right now um, they're gonna hang out with me a little bit while i finish cleaning this up but super excited to have such a happy little healthy baby and she's already looking around, being super sweet and eating good. So feeling very blessed. Thank you all so much for watching. And uh, we'll get back to the truck. For reference, I'll start you all off over here on the driver's side, which is where my sight glass is for the trans. And <clears throat> excuse me. And you can see how low it is. And I've got my little pump set up over here. I'll show you where I put that. There's a right way to do this. And then there's a way that works. Uh, because of where this sight glass is, and my options for, you know, there's the drain plug. Um, <clears throat> by the way, I'm just topping this thing off. The oil's not very old in here. It's just leaked out. Um, and I'm actually going above the normal fill line. Uh, and I'll show you over there. There's a bolt that works, and you can fill it up a little bit extra. <clears throat> as well as having this little external reservoir with the sight glass. <clears throat> gives me a little bit extra fluid. All right, so I've got this oil set up here. It says it fits one-gallon jugs, but it does not so it's kind of just loosely on there uh, it's supposed to be for quart size and gallon jugs but these oil things are just too big for it so it's just chilling in there but it's still working and you can see where i removed the bolt up there there's this plate uh, there's one on the other side too but that's where my little sight glass thing is bolted so i took that top bolt out it's a 17 and i uh, got it chilling right here 
just took one of those out that's like the highest point really I can get to fill this thing up and that way I know I can get as much in there as I want and like I said I'm gonna overfill it a little bit so it has extra cooling and as it leaks it doesn't get low as quickly I think normally it would be that bolt right there just above see the drive shaft can't see it there it is right here let me point to it that guy right there is where you normally put it in and I'm just a hair higher you can't tell because of how I'm holding the camera but just a little bit higher up by doing it right there and it's uh, easier to remove that 17 Well, I don't really see the level going up. That's exciting. Let me keep going. And now it's full. All right, I sent it a little bit too far. I was getting frustrated because it was taking forever to pump it. Uh, obviously, I couldn't see the sight glass from the passenger side. But looking back at the footage, and as y'all saw, I didn't go too far past full. I wanted a little bit of an air bubble. I didn't want to go that full. But before I freak out, start draining it, and I drain too much, and I start chasing my tail and having to add it, uh, I'm going to leave it like that for now and drive it a little bit, see if it goes down, just kind of see where I'm at. Uh, but did take a lot of oil that thing leaked out a bunch so I'm gonna keep an eye on that I may end up having to reseal this thing up before too long uh, so I want to move on to my next project which is dealing with this funky starter situation now the right way would be to go through everything get rid of the fusible links and do regular fuses under the hood uh, a lot of times people will do that right here you make a little um, bus bar type deal so you don't have all these wires connected to your positive terminal and that's mainly what the problem is you got a bunch of stuff sharing a post here sharing it at the key and it just melts together and you stop having things work like they're supposed to and that's why the speedometer doesn't work probably or maybe it's one of those things that's disconnected either way my starter will not work from the key uh, but it works fine if I touch wires together so I'm gonna just bypass the key and put a push button start in here now it's gonna be a little kind of rigged because I'm still gonna have to turn the key and wait for the wait to start and push the button so it's not going to be you know anything fancy where you have the push button start like these new trucks have uh, but it'll be kind of subtle and maybe a little bit of anti-theft because nobody's going to know where the button's at except for y'all so don't steal my truck but um, I'm going to rig that up real quick show y'all how I do that should be real quick I'm just going to lengthen the two wires that I touched together basically and then connect them to the button should be when I push the button then it starts the truck uh, but if that works well we'll move on to the fuel filter and we'll get this thing ready to go and I'll see if there's anything else I can think of to really get some mileage out of these old trucks. So I'm definitely not an electrician and I know this is not going to be pretty but this thing's already a rat's nest and before I dive into this thing and do it the right way I realize it's a rust bucket and I'm just going to kind of make the best of what I have with uh, my own little hack job here. So I'm going to try to connect this wire that I just fed through the firewall. There's a rubber grommet here. It has 15 other wires coming through it all this crap goes through it and it's hanging down by my uh, clutch over there so i got a couple random little waterproof connectors i know this is not what i should do i should solder this if i was going to do it but we're going full half send on this right here we're going to halfway do this thing um i'm going to go ahead and try to strip this wire a little bit so i have something to work with let's see here if i need like this one maybe that one i went with a relatively thick wire um, I tried to match up with the thickness of this because I didn't want to melt it um, you know it's a lot of juice coming through this thing to start this diesel up so hopefully this will be thick enough and do the trick well see another good thing about an old truck I just totally smacked this thing don't care pretty excited about how much I don't care about this thing I don't even see where that went because there's already some dents under here so there you go, I can be nice and sloppy. So I just narrowed it down to the two wires that I need for this. Uh, I had a couple extra wires here 
and uh, as y'all can see from this clip from when this thing actually broke down that there was a plug here everything's looking pretty good super excited about how the Broncos looking I've been staring at it and uh, Dodge is still holding up pretty decent seems oh no well we got the tire done and I went to crank the Dodge back up and we got no start action uh, we think we blew this guy up here so we're about to bypass it when we touched the two wires together it started right up I had the key to uh, in the run position to get it to stay running but we literally just had to hot wire this thing something ain't right and that leads me to explain why am I rigging this thing up like this basically what I'm trying to get at here is this old 12 valve Cummins and a lot of stuff from you know back in the 80s 90s and 70s and some of the old stuff I'm working on back there from the 60s it's so simple that somebody that just is motivated to figure it out like myself like not really being automotive based by trade it's more of just a hobby for me I figured out how to get this thing running on the side of the road while I was hooked up to a trailer you know over 100 miles away from my destination uh, without really many options besides towing my truck trailer and my other truck on the trailer separately so you can rig something up if you're on the side of the road. Now me, I rigged it up, drove it home. I've been driving it back and forth to O'Reilly's with it rigged where I'm just touching wires together. Uh, but now I'm making it, you know, a little bit more conveniently rigged to where I have a push button start. And again, I'm just trying to show you these things are so simple. You just take care of them and you can figure out pretty much anything. And if not, there's a YouTube video out there. You just kind of learn as you go and you'll be happy with some of these old trucks. Some of the new stuff nowadays, you got to go get it plugged in, have the dealership look at it, and I'm just not about that. And my car payment is not my friend. I've been very happy having no debt right now. I've sold my nice truck that I was making payments on, and now I have all this old junk that I'm having fun working on. So we'll get back to it. I'm going to connect this wire here. I have two wires here. They're both going to be black. I'm going to know the difference. It's not going to be ideal. Normally, you would color code them, but two wires going to one button and they're only touching each other when I press the button in theory we'll see if this works uh, I think it'll be nice because I just need you know to have a pretty much a starter button everything else seems to work fine there's my temporary little connectors right here the beauty of this is if it actually works and I like how the push button setup is I can always just connect those two properly and solder them together but for right now I got these little waterproof connectors doing their thing right here looks super sketchy and uh, again battery still disconnected and let me show you what's going on in here you can see there's the the hole in the firewall with all kinds of wires going through it including these two right here and in the cab I've got the other ends of the wires oh look look at this rat's nest I'm telling y'all I'm not that worried about this thing because it's already a piece of crap so that's why I'm not too uh, is this red carpet underneath the black carpet? I bet that's gross under there. Yeah, this thing is a rig. I mean, there's so much just random cut wires and stuff in here. There's no point in making this pretty. So here's the other two ends of my wire. I'm right in my light. So yeah, here's the two ends of these wires. If the battery was connected, touching these two together should start the truck. And uh, if that's the case, then I can uh, make my little temporary push button thing here. It's, uh, what's it called momentary push button so basically whenever I push the button it's touching the two wires together and then when the button's resting or released it's not doing anything so that way uh, key in the on position I can push that button and it'll turn my starter over until I let go of it and then the truck should stay running with the key still turned in the run position so that's the plan there I've got uh, where are they at let's see these little connectors I'm hoping will allow me to I can't really see that but just regular female quick disconnects I'm gonna connect here and then crimp onto the end of these two wires I'll show you how that looks and we'll see if it works I got the first one connected of my little contribution to the rat's nest um, I'll go ahead and put this one on here's another look at that little connector I'm using but pretty simple concept here and uh, just to show you this is gonna go on the back of my little plug here like this hopefully so I'll have one on each end doesn't really matter which one's which because I just need them to touch each other when I push the button so we are getting pretty close here to be able to try this out this was totally something um, 
the way I'm wiring this that I kind of thought of, but someone, one of you guys did actually comment that this was an option. Um, and I was like, yeah, that's that totally makes sense. I could just do that. And I was like, it sounds pretty whack, but you know what? I'll give it a shot. And if it works, it works. So we'll try it out. So thank you all for your suggestions all the time. I know this isn't, you know, a professional concept here or anything, but hey, we're having fun with this whole truck and making our lives a little bit easier and uh, entertaining. So pretty basic. Just crimp that on there like that. And now I'm going to connect these two to the switch. And again, the battery's disconnected, so it doesn't matter if they really touch each other or anything. But Sorry if the lighting's not great. All right, that's all the way in there. And that's all the way in there. I'll come kind of bend these away from each other a little bit so they don't try to do anything crazy. All right. There she is, boys and girls. My little push button start. So I'm gonna end up cutting a hole in one of these plastic panels here, uh, probably over here in this black area, and then just kind of have just a little button sticking out right there but first we need to see if this works let me connect the battery back up and we'll try this button and see what happens got the battery connected keys in I'm gonna turn the key to the run position wait for the weight to start grab our little button down here Let's see what happens So obviously turn it off with the key like normal just to show you again still the key's not going to work uh, as advertised normally so there we go there's run position wait to start and I try to start it nothing so that's uh, where I'm at so if somebody were to break into my truck even if the keys are in it they try to start it that's what they're going to get unless they know where that little button is or they know how to hotwire it which is a good possibility if somebody's uh, you know taking on the chance to steal something like this but I mean it's an old girl who wants this thing anyway 400,000 miles I mean come on got my button installed here you can see it's pretty discreet right down here in the corner of this little panel here and I still have another panel needs to go back up and a radio eventually needs to go in the back in this thing but I like hearing the sound of this 12 valve anyway so I don't really miss it but there's my button super convenient um, pretty discreet I like it I'll show y'all again that it works here in a bit but obviously all I've done is drill the hole and put it there and it just worked I'm not gonna start the truck up again just for that but I am about to change the fuel filters and afterwards I will be starting it back up so I'll show y'all how convenient that is um, fuel filter is in a pretty inconvenient spot on this truck it's uh, down under this uh, brake booster and all on the side of the engine I'll get some light in here in a second but pretty inconvenient but very important uh, fuel filters are something that's commonly overlooked in all vehicles but on diesels it's super important just because you know they have a tendency to get water in the fuel and it's just a more raw crude you know fuel it's just basic dirty diesel so you want to keep it filtered it'll make your truck last longer whether it's a 2021 or a you know 1991 so I'm gonna go ahead and slap a new fuel filter in here there's videos on how to do that um, I'll show you what my filter looks like real quick so I haven't done this in this truck before but you can see there's an opening on the bottom uh, this is where it screws in so on the bottom there's a little plastic drain valve that um, is currently on the other filter so I'm gonna be swapping that over and it came with two o-rings so i got to figure out which one goes where but uh looks pretty straightforward and we'll get that thing on there and fire it up hopefully in case y'all were wondering where mountain dew comes from there's your answer got my new uh filter down in there new o-rings and all um, i filled it up with some diesel and i'm supposed to have to prime the system and you can see down here right where my light is if i can get my light to stay in one place this little lever right here here i'll move it is how you prime it 
and it feels like nothing like it's not doing anything or there's I know there's air in it because I just changed the filter and you're supposed to have to pump that a hundred times to get all the air out and it seems like it's doing nothing so I know I have air in it but I kind of want to see if turning it over if it'll start pumping because I think that little manual valve thing is just not doing anything so I kind of want to see what it'll do without a prime it probably won't do anything uh, except turn over and not start but uh, we're going to see what happens real quick and test out my little button for y'all it's probably not going to go well but I've been pumping this thing probably 300 times and nothing's going on so come around here also here's the uh the two o-rings so just to show y'all uh one o-ring goes on the bottom um around the little black you can see it's missing on this one too the little part where the uh, drain is and then this top one goes up above here on the actual threaded part on the motor so just so you know i had two o-rings wasn't sure where they went that's where they go all right let's see if the lighting's going to work out in here for y'all there's my button right there it's very so discreet you can't even see it just what i wanted to see all right turn the key on wait to start now it's probably not going to start right so let's see what happens went to get my keys to move the Bronco and this thing just rattled itself back to a, a millimeter away from the forerunner. I can't believe that. I think it started rolling away without the pocket brake on. Alright guys, that's going to do it for this video. Thank y'all so much for watching. In conclusion, to keep an old diesel running for hundreds of thousands of miles, you got to keep up with the regular maintenance. Just do what the truck says in the owner's manual, just the basic stuff. You got to keep up with your oil changes, fuel filter changes, and keep an eye on your coolant, transmission, everything. Just keep up with the fluids, check your diff oil, just everything that this thing needs. It's a machine. Keep it lubricated and like a well-oiled machine and it'll keep you happy. Now, with my little uh, side of the road fix in the garage of my push button thing, that's been done before. I mean, it's just something these old trucks have an issue with uh, the wiring. You could do it the right way, but this is an example of, say you get stuck on the side of the road like I did. I made it home by figuring out two wires I could touch together, got the thing running, left it running and drove home. And then now for five bucks I've made an easy way to just have a little push button start so with an older truck you can keep it simple you can work on it yourself even these newer diesels if you keep up with the maintenance they're gonna treat you better and like I've learned the hard way if you're hot riding any of these big work trucks around you know doing tons of burnouts racing four-wheel drive launching you're gonna have a bad time as I did when I blew up my 2011 King Ranch 6.7 uh, so thank y'all so much for watching be sure to check out Graphaholics on Instagram, and I'd love it if you subscribe and leave a comment about your opinion on what I could have done better. Again, thank you. Take care.